Hey everybody, I'm on my back porch and uh, we've got the sound of some construction in the background and maybe a couple cows fighting back here, but I uh, thought it'd be kind of a fun place to, to do the video for the attribute of God that we're going to look at this uh, next couple of days. Um, the attribute that we're going to start with uh, out of all of these is referred to as the incomprehensibility of God. Let me set this up a little bit by beginning in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. We read this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, there is so much truth wrapped up in those verses. It, it's mind-blowing. Um, in the beginning, God. That alone is, is speaking volumes about it. But just stop and ask the question. What if we didn't have Scripture? What if we didn't have even just that one verse to speak all of the truth that is contained in those uh, that, that revelation that God has given us. The reality is, is that we need God's special revelation in order to rightly understand and interpret all of this. Natural revelation is not enough. We can know certain things about the Creator, but we cannot know the Creator unless He reveals Himself to us in his special revelation, which is why uh, we marvel at the, the, the treasure that our Bibles are for us. We have the gift of God's Word, authoritative, uh, inerrant, infallible, trustworthy, preserved, clear, understood through the work of the Spirit that opens our eyes in illumination. Certainly all of this comes for those who have been made alive in Jesus Christ. The, the Word of God becomes powerful, and Christ himself, as it were, is the revelation of God. Uh, we, we see the Father by knowing the Son. He shows us the Father. So, we, are, we have this, this, this incredible need uh, to understand God through special revelation. Creation is just not enough. And at the same time, uh, we can know God truly through His Word. Okay, so it's important to think of this. Um, the truth that God has given us about Himself is truth that can be known, and He intends that we know it. Um, it is part of our worship, part of our joy, our discovery and delight in Him, to know Him truly as He has revealed Himself to be. Not to speculate, uh, not to imagine or just conceive out of, out of thin air, but to, to really engage and to know Him truly through His Word. Um, A.W. Tozer said this on page 8 of his book, The Knowledge of the Holy, If we insist on trying to imagine God, then in the end we will have an idol, uh, one not made with, hand, with hands but with thoughts. An idol of the mind is as offensive to God as an idol of the hand. And so it, it kind of calls us back to where we began uh, just a few days ago with that overview. It's so important that we understand God truly as He revealed Himself to be in His Word. That takes work. That takes prayer. That takes uh, uh, just time to dig and understand, to think and truly understand what God has given us of revelation of Himself. Now, we can know Him truly, but we cannot know Him fully. This is where incomprehensibility comes into play. Um, let me just say it this way. Uh, here would be the, uh, the definition of incomprehensibility. Um, let's see. God is not exactly like anything or anyone. No one can fully know or understand Him. And I think it's important to think, not just now, that is into eternity. We will see Him as He is. We will see Him face to face. We will see Him truly and, and to know Him in a full sense, but never exhaustively. We will never know the, the infinite as finite creation. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that eternity is going to be amazing, is it will be an endless discovery of an undiscoverable, inexhaustible God. And so the things that He chooses to show us and give us 
windows into of his greatness day after day. That is glorious. And friends, we have that now in part, don't we? We have that now. Think of the Word of God. We can know him truly, but we cannot know him fully. Uh, you can study the Bible your entire life and never really fully exhaust the revelation of an infinitely glorious God. I, I like how I heard it recently. The Bible is the revelation of an infinite God, and therefore it is the work of the, the mind of an infinite God, and it is infinite in its glory. So as we study and dig, we will find more and more, and that's been the case in my life. Every single week, I dig in and I see new things, even in passages I've studied dozens and dozens of times. God's Word is living and active because it's a reflection of who He is, inexhaustible and infinite. So, think about this. Uh, the Apostle Paul writes Romans chapters 1 through 11, under inspiration of God. Some of the most rich, glorious, and, and mysterious, stunning theology. And at the end, in Romans chapter 11, this is what he writes. Listen to these words. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and inscrutable his ways. What, how, how amazing is it that he would say that at the end of spectacular revelation that he's just finished writing? How unsearchable his judgments and inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of God? Who has been his counselor? Who has ever given him a gift that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory, both now and forever. So, that is one of the things that we have in view as we go into this study, that there is a way to know God more truly, but never in, the, in a complete sense. We are called to, to know him, but we will never fully know him in that way. And uh, as a result, we really have two categories of attributes that uh, scholars have broken apart. Um, they put one category and they call it uh, the incommunicable attributes. Uh, those are attributes that are only true of God. The attributes that we don't share any of. For instance, his omnipresence, you know, where he's, he's everywhere present fully, all at the same time and eternally. We don't have that. I'm localized. I'm sitting right here on the porch. That's the only place I can be. Um, God is uniquely different than anything else that exists in the world. Incommunicable attributes. There are many of those that we're going to look at together. There's another category called communicable attributes. Uh, it's those that we can, at least in some part, uh, understand or experience in, our, in ourselves. Because we're made in the image of God, we know what it's like to, to, to know the attribute of love. We, we, we echo His glory in understanding what love is. And at least in part, never fully, but in part, we, we under, understand that. What, what is love? Well, we experience that. Um, some of those other attributes that we share in that way uh, are true of God. So, incommunicable uh, and communicable we're going to look at both of those categories as we move through these attributes in the coming weeks. So what I've done is I've put together a sheet for you to study this on your own. There's a number of verses that I want to encourage you to look up this next couple days. And then I've got uh, four or five questions here to just kind of walk through and, uh, and, and really allow that application and personal devotion with the Lord your worship to be stirred as you study and, and delight in these attributes of God as we go. One thing I was thinking about that we could do on Facebook is if you have questions, and I hope you do, I, I hope this stirs in you questions. Well, well, what about in heaven? I thought we were going to know him. I thought we were going to know everything. Uh, that's a great question. And the answer is no, we won't. We, we won't know everything when we get to heaven. We will need forever to explore and discover, and we will never fully know or understand God. That's the glory of God, and that's a good thing. So questions like that that come up, just post those on Facebook under the comments section of these posts as we go, 
and we can have some really meaningful interaction uh, together as a as a church online that way. So hey, the Lord bless you. Uh, make sure you delight and and have that relational interaction with the Lord. Pray to Him, delight in Him, adore Him as you learn these attributes as we go through in the coming days. God bless. We'll see you next time.